All right, have and have not fans. This is an interesting video that people have been asking me to do since the last episode, the quote unquote mid season finale, not mid season finale of Lover's Passion. Uh, Chandler and I are going to go back and forth listing out the top five characters we would want to, I guess you could say, either reappear into the show or appear in the series for the first time. So, what we're going to do is kind of a back and forth where I'll list out like my number five, he'll list out his number five, and we'll go all the way until we're at number one. So Chandler, if you would like, you can just start off and tell me who is the number five character you would like to see appear in the back half of this current season. My number five, all right, have and have not fans, my number five would have to be Pearl, Justin's mama. Ah, Pearl. Okay, I I have to agree with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. The main, if not only, reason I want Pearl to reappear into the show is just to get her reaction to her son being gay. Well, maybe not so much being gay, but being exposed. And then it looks like his wife is actually going to divorce. That's the main reason I want Pearl to reappear into the show. I want Pearl to appear in the show for two reappear for two reasons. That. And I would like to her, for her to have a reaction, interaction with Veronica. That's true because, you know, given the fact that her son um, was the one that Justin got caught in a compromising position with, we see that a lot in TV shows and movies where the parents of a couple or not couple meet up and one parent blames the other one it's like your son did this to my son i can see pearl jumping at veronica and veronica ain't having that so i would no. love to see how that would go down and uh, i feel i mean not to spoil my list but to be honest i did not put per pearl on my list and i'm just like oh my god but that doesn't mean i don't want her to come back she just wasn't in my top five <laughs> All right. So um, my number five is actually Celine. Uh, Celine Gonzalez. Um, she actually is someone I would love to reappear in the back half of this season just because there's so much with her character. I would love to see, you know, like all the money that uh, Jim gave her and child support, you know, millions of dollars. Uh, the fact that she said we're not even le leading fans to believe that we haven't seen the last of her yet. And the sad part is. The last time we saw Celine on screen was her watching the TV when Jim was giving his speech about how he wasn't going to quit the run for governor. And during that time, you know, we had the montages of the bloodbath he ordered from the Malones, uh, Candace being choked out and various other scenes there. But I feel like Celine is a character who has a lot of background that we still need to explore yes i will admit that there is a lot going on in the series already so having her back would add fuel to the fire but to be honest there have been various seasons where jim has a lot on his plate way more than he can handle so why not throw this back in the mix so celine is going to be my number five all right okay so now we are up to number four all right, my number four is going to be Mama Rose. Mama Rose Malone. All right, and uh, what's some of the main reasons you want her to appear in the show? Uh, well, I think you know my, my main reason is this whole Wyatt situation. I want her, and Tyler Perry, if you're listening, I want her to have a reaction, inter interaction with Catherine Pryor. I feel the same way. Mama Rose is definitely. I need it. I want it. My, like Juvenile says, I want it. I need it in my life. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much story potential with those two characters on the screen that it's not even funny. Tyler Perry could like the 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 mischief that those two would get into. The background, especially their fathers were in cahoots with each other. There's just you so know, I much. Think that Exactly. It's like there's no because underhanded you know, tricks Catherine or nothing. And Hannah are friends. Catherine and Hannah are friends. Yep. And, and Catherine might say, now look, this is my friend. You're not going to touch her, son, or else. Yep. I mean, and the thing is, she knows Benny is a good kid despite every all the crap he's gotten into this season. And he's really just trying to make his way. 
So I definitely agree. Mama Rose is a good contender for returning in this season. Uh, my number four is, uh, believe it or not, Tony, because we need to know, is he dead yet? I mean, granted, it's only been a few days, literally, since he was in the show uh, when Benny kicked him out of Hannah's house. But at the same time, it's just like his father was definitely an important part of his story arc. And I do remember tweeting with uh, Patrick, the actor, uh, Patrick Fossett, uh, the actor that portrays Tony. This was months ago. And he even told me that he would love for Tony not just to return to the show, but kind of be reintroduced into the show. Like um, that's as far as he went in the tweet. But there are so many things they could do with his character. Like even though it's only been maybe a few days to a week, week and a half. Have him getting kind of like sicker, so he's kind of rethinking a lot of his decisions. And uh, earlier today, when I was rewatching some episodes, I saw the scene where um, the the judge ruled in favor of Tony to get Benny off life support, and Hannah is chasing him in the halls, literally begging on her knees to you know let her son. It's like let me let me at least see him one more time. And I was just like, that's ridiculous how she went through all that hell and high water just to get mercy from him. Yet he's the one on the flip side. It's, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he's on his knees begging his son for a kidney. So I feel like when it comes to Tony, it would be a great way. Hope, I mean, he can actually step up and be the father he never was to Benny by telling him like, you know, hey, son, you're doing a lot of crazy stuff right now. So. Just like Candace's father showing up in the series, I feel like Tony should show um, up again for Benny. So that's why Tony is my number four. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I thought, I thought about Tony, but I didn't put him on the list. <laughs> no, I definitely see why. I mean, when I was making this list, I felt conflicted because if we did a top There's ten. So many of them. Yeah, if we did a top ten then Pearl and a lot of other characters would have been on the list. But I feel like for the sake of this being like our first listing video, we'll do a top five, but maybe on like the next, maybe future videos, it'll be 10. But yeah, so let's see. Yeah, Celine and Tony for me. So what's your number three? My number three is Michael. Oh, good one. Good one. Michael, Michael. Cause we, we really don't know. We haven't heard anything about it. The last time we saw Michael was when Benny, Benny was trying to, when Candace was trying to get Benny to sue the crier. Yep, it was uh, Benny and Michael and then the attorney at Candace's house Benny. and uh, Hannah walked in, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, it, it was sad because, you know, Michael was like Benny, you know, he was there to give some information to figure out what the next steps would be to to get justice. It wasn't all about, oh, we're going to sue the cries and get all this money. It was about proper justice being served. And, you know, he even apologized to Hannah like, hey, I didn't know what was going on. Like he didn't know that Candace had these ulterior motives to get more money out of the criers. So I felt bad that that was their last interaction on screen. I did too. That's why I've always wanted him, wanted him to come back. You know, it's not looking too good for them in the romantic department. Yeah. But they could be friends. Yeah, like I said before, the fact that he could have been there to comfort her for losing her grandchild, just like, you know, she was there for him after he lost his grandchild. There was chemistry there and uh, going back to what I said before, rewatching some episodes, I just felt so bad because, you know, she pushed Michael away and became attracted to Byron. And then it turned out Byron was two-timing her the whole time, despite at the very end, developing real feelings for her because she was so vulnerable. And it was like watching Byron and um, Hannah was kind of like watching Oscar and Candace when they first met, you know, Candace and Hannah were both reserved and they felt like there wasn't something, there was something about Byron and Oscar uh, respectively that they couldn't trust. But then when they finally opened up, we saw a real vulnerable side to both of these strong black females. Yes, you might say Hannah is a hypocritical Christian. Yes, you might say that Candace is a low down street whore. But at the end of the day, they're both strong, independent black women. So to see them that vulnerable with men, they didn't even want to give the time of day and both at both ended up heartbroken. That was very sad to see. Very sad. 
And, so, and uh, I mean, not to just not jump off of the list now. That's why I like these back and forth, because even though we list out one particular character, we can talk about that character's like fo- the foil to that character and kind of relive feelings we got when we watched those episodes. So honestly, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Michael is a strong number three, strong number three. You know, I was hoping that when Michael... I was hoping that Michael was going to come back when Quincy Jr. got killed. It, it, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, those characters really could have related to each other then. I mean, don't get me wrong. Catherine was a great support. Mm-hmm. She knows what it feels like to lose a child, but she has no idea what it feels like to lose a grandchild. It, exactly. And, see, Michael could relate to that. I mean, oh. it, the, the storyline writes itself like that i feel i've said this before there's a difference between a forced romance and an earned romance where it slowly develops instead of being slapped right in our faces it's just there's there's just so much they could have done with that okay um my number three is actually your number four and that's uh mama rose and to be honest uh for the main reason as we discussed time and time again uh before of the interactions between Catherine and Mama Rose because I feel like Mama Rose, if she returns, I feel like it's going to be with a vengeance. And it would I would just love to see her about to rain hell down on the likes of Benny, or more specifically, Jim and David. But then out of nowhere, it's Catherine Cryer who just comes out of the shadows and saves the day one of her one of her classic one liners. She just walks in at the right time and then tells like, I don't give a damn who you are. It's like I'm Catherine. And she just gives her she gives her I'm Veronica speech, if you will, and then that just shuts the whole thing down and then it well, turns how do you out think Mama Rose would react to that. Oh, Mama Rose ain't gonna back down, but I feel like if Catherine drops her last name and then she's like, Whoa, wait a minute and then they kind and then the action kind of ceases and then at, <laughs> and I, I just feel I just feel like the last name is going to be the key. And then that's going to unlock the door to all this rich history between characters. And then I can see Jim being like, what the hell's going on here? And those two, ta- I, we talked about it before, you know, uh, Catherine and Mama Rose just having a conversation about what an ass Jim is. And I, I, the story writes itself. Again, I, I, I feel I want to say a lot, a lot. The story writes itself. So Mama Rose definite thumbs up for i want her to return because as i said before this new actress that portrays her i love her i don't, I mean people rachel, can hate i love rachel yep yeah, people can hate all they want but i feel like she encompasses this new version of mama rose just because it's a different actress i don't mind it as much because this mama rose is definitely written differently than the one we got back in season two exactly yeah rachel winfrey is her name Winfrey, she's got the same last name as Oprah. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? But I feel like, uh, yeah, Mama Rose is a strong contender. That's why she's at my top five. So now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Who is your top, uh, excuse me, your number two? Number my two. My number two is Veronica's mother. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Um... Enough said. The mom showing up. I feel like it's poetry in motion because the first half. Well, I don't even want to say the first half because the cast member said episode 10 wasn't really the mid season finale. So let me just no. say that. So, let me just so say. We are, we, I'm just going to say that May 1st is going to be part two of the first half of the season. I, yeah, I would cut it off at either episode 11 or 12, you know? I'd say, like, number 12 is probably like, oh, okay, that's going to be, quote-unquote, the real season finale, mid-season finale, because the mini synopsis was Candace and Axer playing like a boss. That sounds like, to me, the makings of a mid-season finale. So maybe the back dozen episodes or so, we'll just call that part two of season six. So let me just say that that would be a great way to shoehorn in the back half being Veronica focused while the first half was heavily Candace focused. So Veronica's mom showing up while we got to focus on quote unquote Candace's father. I couldn't agree more because we can learn more about even Veronica's father. Why Jim sued him, um, why Jim sued him a little bit more backstory to Veronica's childhood. 
So, yeah, Veronica's mom, I want her to show up. No questions asked. Now, this is another thing. I don't know if you... Do you remember David when David said... Jim said, Veronica's mom hates me. Yep. And David said, David said, well, you did sue her husband. Yep. And then Jim said, yeah, I sued the hell of her husband. How do we, how do we know that that's Veronica's father? How do we know that maybe it could be that Veronica's father was already dead and Veronica's mother married again? That could be a possibility. I, I would hope that's not the, well, then again, huh? Yeah, I feel like maybe, see, I, I want that to happen, but then there are just so many questions because I'm my mind is telling me the, there are so many ideas I have, but then reality is like, okay, the show's ending in 2020, so how far is Tyler Perry actually going to go with some of the ideas that I would like to see played out? But that's something I never took into um, to consideration. Well, I, I definitely agree. Man. Yeah, I hope that there, are, a lot of these ideas do get played out. Yeah, I, I would, I would hope so. I would love to see that happen. But yeah, Veronica's mom, definitely a contender for me. Uh, which is ironic because my number two is the Lion Tattoo Man. That's my number two. Uh, Candace's father is my number two oh, as to a person. That's my. That's my. And there, no spoilers. No spoilers. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Because there are a couple times on the list so far when I've wanted to say what your number is my number. <laughs> but, yeah, the Lion Tattoo Man, he is my number uh, uh, two because I feel like even if he shows up in the season, he do it doesn't have to be known to, like, the people that it's relevant to. Like, let's say if Veronica, uh, Melissa, or some Arquita, let's say if whoever this man is, if we see the tattoo then we'll know this is the guy we've been waiting to see since the lion. And now, you know what? Who knows? He could already be there. That, that, he, exactly. That's why I said the lion the tattoo. Police officer that Oscar was given money to. Yep. That's why I said the lion tattoo man as opposed to Derek or, you know, somebody along those lines. I wanted to leave it as open-ended as possible just because I want to give the back half of this season a benefit of the doubt that Tyler Perry can flip one over on us. So the lion tattoo man, I feel for the same reasons as Veronica's mom, let them appear in the series just to give more depth to the characters we already have. That's, that's my main thing with the number one spot. Who is your number one? Candace's father. And, uh, you know what? You know what? Since you've already said it, my number one is actually Veronica's mom. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to stop you. I'm like, no, 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 let's back it up. Let's just, let's back it up. So, yeah, uh, let's just put it this way. We've already really given our initial thoughts on why these characters were our number twos, ironically enough. So, you tell me why you want the tattoo man to be your number one and I'll let you know why I feel like Veronica's mom is number one. So you can go first. Because I think that, well, we have heard actually, we have kind of gotten a lot more, well, maybe not a lot more, but a little bit more insight on Candace's father than we have Veronica's mother. And in one and episode too. That, oh yeah. And I think that, you know, Veronica's mom showing up, I don't know that that will do anything to Veronica, but I'm telling you, if Candace's father shows up, I'm telling you, it will turn her world upside down. It will. It really will. I agree. I agree. And on the flip side of that, when I say Veronica's mom is not my number one, I say she's my number one simply because with Veronica doing everything that she's been doing so far, it's fun to watch, but unless there's some substance to her actions... I don't really feel for her character. Like, I don't feel like there's any redemptive traits for her. I feel like it's just we're seeing her snap and go crazy just for the sake of her going crazy. If I knew more of her backstory, how she was raised, if she might have went through a lesbian phase like Jeffrey's a homosexual, those kind of things to me matter the most. So when she reenacts these things in her present persona, 
then I might be like, oh, now I understand what's going on. No spoilers here, but in terms of acrimony, that's one thing I did love about Taj P. Henson's character, Melinda. They did the flashbacks of when she was younger in college and things like that. So we saw things build up to the climactic finish of the movie. Hence why I'm like, okay, what happened in acrimony? Did that kind of spoil what happens with Veronica and the haves and the have not? So that's why Veronica's mom is my number one. But yes, I do agree. I feel like in terms of Veronica's mom, I want more in terms of backstory for Veronica. In terms of Candace's father, him showing up would definitely shake things up in her world. So, yeah, both characters overall, I feel, hey, I feel like they're both are in our top two for a reason. Even though they're a different order, they're in our top two for a reason. Exactly. And imagine what would happen if those two met up. Whew. Um... Oh, man, that is just, I can't even, my mind can't even handle that. Wow. That, I mean, let, let, let me try to break that down. Okay. So if Veronica goes, let's say, you know, she gets into, uh, not I, I don't even call it a relationship. She uh, gets together with the man that raped Candace. I mean, excuse me, the man that raped Hannah and Candace's father then you that's kind of a interesting throwback because she was with Candace's brother and Hannah's son. And then it's kind of like very freaky because Candace's father would be getting it in on with the woman that got it on with Hannah's son. The, you know what? That's just, the, oh man, that's like a sick family tree going down right there. So, and then Veronica's mama might come in there and meet him and say, who are you? Do you even know her name? Yeah, there's just so many things. Oh, man. I can't even. I can't even. So, overall, folks, that was Chandler's and I top five list of characters we want to either return to the show or appear for the first time in the back half of season six in 2018. So in the comment section below, let us know what five characters you would like to show up at the end of this season. Because I mean, and remember, and remember we are not even a month away. Nope. I mean, in like what? Right. One, two, three. Yeah. And like, Le less than a month, like less than four weeks away, we're going to be talking about episode 11 and hopefully more theories about the rest of the season. So stay tuned on the channel. Subscribe because we have another top five list on the way in regards to the top five characters we think will or should die in this season. So thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you later.